59. If you don't know it, this is the day. This is the day. We might have a full house. I hadn't spell, uh, spelled it. Oh, I, 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 it I haven't written it down yet, but I will. That's what I guess it is. Okay. He works with me, and she's having some health problems. And I understand Billy's uh, having heart trouble. Billy is having heart trouble. They said only 15% of his heart is working. Well, Doctor, made it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Three or four years with only 15% of his heart. Well, that was not taking care of himself. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know how well Billy takes care of himself. But there are other announcements. We do have a guest today. A first time guest who just moved to 
Carol. Jess, we welcome you and uh, hope that you feel Jack. welcome and Jack. want Jack. to come back. Yes. How about the acronym? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Our Father in heaven, <laughs> we come to say thank you, Lord, for the blessings you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for these people who have chosen to come to worship you this morning. And we pray, Lord, that you will go with us through this service. We pray, Lord, for your healing touch to those that's on the prayer list. These that we have added. And we pray, Lord, that you'll help us as we sing praises to your name. And may, Lord, the right way to die to your word in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen.
for God's amazing grace. Yeah. What number is I fly away? Uh, 54 in the Did black you? book. In the black book, 54? Yeah, that's what I have to use. <laughs> that's what that's Daryl's book. Is that Daryl's book? You, you put Daryl. 54 in the, in the darker book. Not to be racially insensitive. That's right. You want to be put in the darker book. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. 
Get your turn, girl. I'm going to say a pretty thing, and I'm going to be free. You're behind. You had what you missed last Two week weeks. Uh-oh. You're like behind. Listen to it. You should have rocks downstairs. <laughs> Here's what I'm going to speak on in that storm. Terrible storm, right? Awful storm. I have drove those back ro roads and saw the tin and stuff and all the stuff just throw it out in the fields. It looks awful, right? Looks terrible. Here's what I saw in that, and I wish Michael was here. Here's what he said. He said, look what the Lord done. And it's scary. An, an act of God, right? And it was the Lord. Hey, there are some folks who say, well, Daryl, how is that the Lord? Everything that happens is the Lord. Here's what I got from that. As Michael said what he said, I could feel a chill down my spine as I looked out there and seen that. I was touched. I was shocked. And as I drove in that curve and seen all of that destruction, I asked myself, what good can come of this, right? Why would he let something as such happen? Ask myself, as I drove in, I just seen all of that destruction. It's a warning. I've got some friends that stay out there, and, and I saw them, and we stopped, and we talked. And here's what I heard from everyone I talked to. They said, the forecasters were right. They got it right this time. Everything they said was going to happen, happened. The storms and wind, the, the hail, and everything. They were right this time. I sat up there at my apartment on the front porch, and I was looking toward Quanta the whole time, and I watched the rain, the wind, and the hell, and I said, what a magnificent show of the Lord. But here's what I found, and, and I got some phone calls as the storm was happening. I had a friend that said, you guys are getting hammered up there. I said, really, it's not that bad. It hadn't hit in town. I, I said, I've not hopped out and seen what's happened, but it really hadn't, hadn't been that bad. And he said, guys, you guys are getting hammered. I said, no, not really. I sat on the front porch looking toward Quantum. Didn't seem that bad to me. But once I got out that next day and about, I realized I had missed everything. It had tore up everything. Here's what's heavily on my heart. The forecasters were right. They got it right this time. The Lord gets it right every time. There's another storm that's coming. And I'm going to miss this next one too. I'm going to make sure I'm gone. I'm going to make sure I'm home with him. Because you, you know what? Hell, like fire, it didn't rain down in that storm. The Bible speaks of how that storm is going to occur and it's going to be continuously. There's not going to be any stop in that storm. And all that was heavily up on my heart, I told, I told Michael this. I said, but at least we still have the Lord. He's here with us. He's going to see us through this. But how about that next storm that he's forecast the, the Bible? See, it says it over and over and over. And, and there are some people right now who don't believe, but here's what they're going to say once it began. The Lord was right. It's happened. What am I going to do? They're, they're lost, right? <laughs> here's the story that we need to pass on. There's another storm that's coming. And the Lord is right. Hey, there are some folks who don't believe it, but he's right. But I'm happy I missed that storm. I'm happy I wasn't in that storm. I'm happy this next storm is coming. I'm not going to be in that storm. But how do we share with the world? They can miss that storm. What do we need to share with them? If you know the Lord, if you're saved, then you just the way I sat on my front porch. I wasn't worried. No matter what happened, I didn't have to worry. Even had I been in that storm, even had I perished, it wouldn't have mattered, right? Why? Because I'd be home with him. But how about those who are lost? How about those who are lost? There's another storm that's coming. And it happened fast, right? It happened so fast, and all I could think of, the folks who lost homes and whatnot, I can hear them saying it happened so fast. In just a few minutes, all was lost. If we're not saved in this next storm, it happens that fast. All is going to be lost. But it doesn't have to happen. But here's what was so great. 
I was happy to hear about that storm, that nobody perished. But it says here in the Bible, in this next storm, there's folks who are going to be lost. That wide gate and that narrow gate, he says, we have to enter how? At the narrow gate and not at the wide gate. This is the message we have to share. There are going to be folks who are going to be lost. Our time left or after we're saved, we are to help lead people to Christ. So they are not lost. I'm going to close with this. As we see things like that, it reminds us of what? How important we are. The Lord hung on the cross. He paid the price. He, he has it all. All we have to do is accept it. Hey, let's share with the world. What is your, what is this life? It's a sorting pen. I'm a hog farmer, but it's a sorting pen. I sort pigs all the time. At, at the end of this life, you're going to be sorted. He's going to sift through us hey, like wheat. Is what the Bible says, right? Hey, if, if we've done what we have to do, then we're going home with him. It's just that simple. Hey, if we haven't, where are we headed? To hell. That's what we need to share with the world. Hell is alive and it's real. And it's going to occur. The same way that storm did. It's swift, it's fast. All will be lost if you're not saved. So let's share with the world. The Lord has paid the price. All we have to do is accept it and serve the Lord. Let's share that. Don't believe I was looking at some scripture that much, pretty much was what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. Want to share a personal experience first. Was over at Alfred's. Was checking out. Daryl came in, spoke to me, and the young man that was. There's the cash register. I just asked him, I said, have you met my brother Daryl? <laughs> he laughed at me. And I'm proud to call, call Daryl my brother, as I am any, any and all Christian people. They're my brothers and my sisters. And I'm glad to be able to call y'all my brothers and sisters. In Matthew 25, and I'm going to begin in the 31st verse, and I don't even know how far I'm going. But the scripture I was looking at, it goes right along with what Daryl was talking about. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him, shall be gathered all nations. He shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was unhungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you, shall, you came unto me. Then shall the righteous say unto him, When saw we the unhungry, and fed you, or thirsty, and gave you drink? When saw we you a stranger and took you in, or naked and clothed you? When saw we you sick, or in prison and came unto thee? This is the part of that that we want to be involved in. The Christian people frequently do things to help someone else. 
without truly giving it in a, a, that much of a thought. We don't think about why am I doing this? They do it because they love the Lord. Amen. I know that we as a group, most of us don't have that much in the way of finances. There are things we can't do. But there's still so much we can do. It's been mentioned this morning that I am taking an EMT class. And I expect to finish it. The Lord's willing, and I don't ask for this life first, then it's getting close. After finishing the class, I will have to take the National Registry exam. And if I can pass that, I'll be in the EMT. I didn't dream until this last fall that I would ever try this. And I wonder why I would try it even after I decided to. And I'm going to do it to be a little bit of help to this community. The ambulance service is in need of people. <coughs> uh, if I've got my count right, we're down to two full-time employees that are AMT or paramedics. You need four people on duty every day. How do you schedule that? You need a, a crew to run the first ambulance. You need a crew that's ready to run if they have to go again. Too many days we don't have a backup crew. I don't know how long it will be before another class is offered. Or how long or where you would have to go to get in another class right away. But think about, if not that, what can I do to help our community? As a famous president said one time, <coughs> ask not what your country can do for you but what you can do for your country we have to start small there's not that much we can do to affect this entire country but we can affect this community And while I have chosen to try to be a benefit to this community through the ambulance service, it's much more important what Darrell was saying, that we need to share the Word of God with this community. It goes on to say in verse 40, The king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Anything we do to help out someone, Jesus said it's just like you did it to him. Now the sad part is that not everybody is going to hear Jesus say 
come, you blessed. Because in verse 41 it says, Then shall he say unto them on the left, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. And goes on and talks about, You saw me hungry when you did nothing. You saw me in need of clothing, and you did nothing. There is another thought to go with that. We can tell the world, this community, how much we love them. But when we totally ignore their needs, whatever it is, and we all have needs from time to time, different needs, but we all have needs. And when we totally ignore the needs of our community and tell them how much we love them, are they going to believe in you then? No, they're not. As Darrell said, narrow is the gate that leads to righteousness. So narrow is the gate that leads to heaven. And wide is the gate that leads to hell. And many there be that go there. We don't want to see anyone leave this life lost. But sadly, the Bible tells us many will. Whatever we can do to encourage people, we should do. You may be feeling down in the dumps yourself, but encouraging someone else will in the long run make you feel better. Some of us can't do a whole lot. But don't forget to pray. We can all pray for our fellow man. And some of us can do a little more. And when we can, we should. I don't like for the radios to go off in the middle of our service like they did last Sunday. But I am thankful for those that answer that call. I don't like for it to go off because that means somebody's hurt. Somebody's sick. And when it does go up in service, I'm going to stop and pray for them. And I definitely don't want anyone to think that I'm disturbed because of the radio. It's just that I don't enjoy seeing other people sick and ill and hurt. But if I can go to them and help them, get them to help, then I should. As I told Elton one day when I asked him what he thought about me working with the ambulance, The church is first with me. Well, I've had the opportunity now several times to 
tell somebody that I know that would you pray for me? <laughs> Sometimes that opportunity for somebody I've never seen before. As long as I've been here in Florida, they tell people I don't have a clue who they are. Told Nelson in Sunday school, probably been here about 16 years. Probably 90% of the people in this town know who I am. And I may be no 10% of the people. I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm failing in more ways than one. And one way I'm failing is in trying to get to know the people of this town. But I'm, I'm meeting a few more of them all the time. And I pray that we, and that's you and me both, can have a positive influence on this town. If we can have a positive influence here, it should spread out. Sadly, there are many that the last verse in chapter 25 says, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the, light, but the righteous unto life eternal. The good thing about life eternal is it doesn't have an end. The bad thing about punishment eternal is it doesn't have an end. The song that we sang this morning says that when we've been there 10,000 years, we don't have any left days to sing God's praise. If 10,000 years doesn't shorten it any, that's as good a definition as I know of to understand that there is no end to eternity. And we all are going to spend eternity Hopefully we are all going to spend eternity in heaven and not in hell. But we are all going to spend eternity. Please bear with us. 294. Richard, would you dismiss us? Lord, thanks for the 
Tulsa, you guys are there in your name, and you will see you. Please tell us we're here on the way home. Please tell us we're here bringing back to Sunday. Please think of us as we go uh, throughout our week. Help us to do what you want us to do and to reach out to those who don't know you. Amen. 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 Amen.